Welcome everyone to another FPGA upgrade and update. As per the previous video, if you're new to this channel, we have already certainly nearly 20 FPGA videos in the meantime. You have fine, very lot of goodness with the ice, Icebreaker Ice40 or ULIC 3S uh, ECP5. And we wrote our own video core and audio core here, previous videos. And initially, uh, and today's video is about a further upgrade and optimization. Initially, I had here getting started with FPGAs and Verilog. Na naively, intuitively, I had here just 8-bit memory bus because 8-bit is with the ice 40, with the icebreaker, we didn't have so much memory and the target was VGA, also yesterday's live stream, Monkey Island's graphic on an FPGA. And the target was always VGA, meaning um, the original, at least, game graphic in DOS usually 320 by 200, although uh, this also, by the way, with 8-bit graphics, 8-bit palette of not direct RGB, but 8-bit um, 256 entries, so that you have some usable, nice, high-fidelity graphic, which probably, fun fact, I also could have shown you this. The issue is, if you have this direct addressed RGB, then you have only, for example, 2-bit, um, 2... Uh, 332, 33 bit, um, meaning 3 bit per color component. And yeah, 333, 2 times 3 bit would already be 9 bit, so you have one component only 2 bit, so this is not very high color fidelity. Sometimes some people do this. The issue is you do not get the best graphics out of this um, because VGA palette. Because this leaves you with a very, uh, very uh, not not a good choice of colors if you have it like this um, address. So this is why if you dither this dither meaning um, maybe if you're three three two bit RGB. Let's see if you have some example. Actually, I could show you this. Actually, let's show you this live on GIMP. Um, so this is why usually palette was used. Let's fire up a GIMP. Um, as you see, not making this stuff up of running everything on a Linux desktop in 2020. So recent files, I should have here some Lena of, uh, of course, not document history. Thank you very much. Where is my Lena test sample? Uh, so this is um, our, this is 8-bit um, per component, so 24-bit, as you see in full high fidelity glory of, uh, well, a little bit unsharp, but whatever, <laughs> not so high resolution. And if you use GIMP to simulate this, or not actually to work with this, not simulate, but work with this, so if you take this to the standard, this is not even 332, uh, this is the standard VGA palette, which is a little bit arbitrary, and there you see what loss of color fidelity you get with this. What you would normally do is not um, threshold this directly to this, but this are this, this would be color dithering here, Floyd Steinberg. This already looks somewhat better, but of course for the latest and greatest and best game um, artwork, what they have done back in the day is working with this constraints, they have done custom palettes. So the designers of Monkey Islands, for example, as per yesterday's live stream, if they were working with some dark night island theme, then they simply have done a custom palette, not using all the sunny, bright, sand and, and daylight colors, but having a palette optimized for just this mode. And this is when we load here yesterday's graphic of Monkey Islands, probably maybe this one. Um, and so this is an optimized palette. This is, this is already 256 colors and we can simulate this also by changing this to RGB and then dithering this either dithering or thresholding this back either to the VGA palette. We, yeah, let's yeah let's dither this Floyd Steinberg dither. So this is the difference between a custom palette of yeah that looks amazing and a default palette of yeah let's just use a fixed color that we have there. So in case you ever wondered what that was about. Um, so yeah, VGA, and um, what I wanted to do today is, uh, as you see, there's always proof of concept 
getting started and uh, really optimizing the heck out of it. We have here one thing, so this is 64K by the way, um, I want to note here, and the one thing is this mode X, meaning mode X was this. So this was a standard 13 hex mode of DOS BIOS, fame of IBM, goodness there. And there was some mode X that you could reach with a little bit of register fiddling, and that would be 320 by 240. Um, however, this results in um, more memory use that maybe some initial VGA cards didn't have, not sure, but I think it's 72K or something of that sort. And so yeah, we need to improve the memory a little bit also. One thing I, so what I wanted to improve today is, um, initially we had an 8-bit bus because 8-bit per pixel, that is this 8-bit palette color there. Um, and of course 8-bit because at each pixel we scan out 8 bits of color data, so this is why initially my VRAM setup was 8 bit. However, I quickly noticed, especially for the text mode, that this was not very efficient because um, we need the text character, so text mode meaning to shortly summarize this for a text mode like this text editor, you would not have the pixel data there, but the color the, the text like for example a with a color attribute so you have actually 16 bit also in dos on the xt and, and ega cga text mode stuff and the color attribute meaning blinking and color foreground background color so like blue so you have you have two bytes like x something for the color attribute um, previous videos and for this i i realized implementing so actually implementing Pixel scanning pixel data out was easier because for the text mode you need two eight bit so like if you so two bytes like often called a word although I don't really like this term very much um, sixteen bit data so for this previous video months ago we upgraded from an eight bit to sixteen bit so that for one memory access we can access with one clock cycle access both the text, uh, text data and the color attribute. Um, so far so good, this worked pretty good for the last months. But there is one more thing. So for, for months we have run the 16-bit memory bus, this is still visible here, write and read address and write data and um, yeah. And actually this is the write and read data, so 16-bit. However, there is one complication and so one thing I've not pointed out, so you see how much you can hide of proof of concept hates working and not telling you the ugly details because due to the 16-bit memory bus addressing this is a little bit nah. We have here the VRAM declared as UN32 pointer meaning 32-bit at a time for our 32-bit RISC-V CPU here from this homebrew project and using this is a little bit nah annoying what you would normally not usually encounter on a production system because I only wired up 16 bit of this. So if you read and write this 16 bit are thrown away. So uh, not only is this a little bit annoying if you would uh, know this is C++, welcome everyone, this is a C++ or a C or C, doesn't, doesn't matter too much. It's, it's basically C with a little bit of C++ stuff. But thank you for asking. We are doing here firmware, so RISC-V, RISC-V soft, um, our own or Claire's Pico RISC-V, Risk five CPU on a FPGA, um, Python. Python is possible, but no, not the most convenient first choice here. Um, so one consequence of this is this. This is a little bit um, non-standard, as in we have a thirty-two bit pointer, and whatever we write and read to this, only the lowest sixteen bit are valid. Of course, you can work with this, and I've seen you. See, uh, I've shown you plenty of demos, and they certainly look amazing and stuff. And if you if you ignore this, like half of your data is like def null data nirvana stuff, then yeah, so far so good. Um, but of course, things should also be better. So on the here is how this looks on the VRAM side on the Verilog. So this is Verilog of uh, FPGA logic implementation. Goodness here, and this is how it looks here: font or VRAM data. And as you see here, we have our VRAM read and write data, and um, we have here only 16-bit two bytes wired up. Actually, I should actually check if we 
actually pass all the VRAM read data, where is our uh, module? Let's quickly check this. So there is address and yeah, we have actually all the 32 bits. So it works, but it is a little bit ugly because one thing, of course, yesterday implementing the loading of the data of the Monkey Islands data and yesterday's live stream, we have here somewhere the TGA file here. And so what is a little bit inconvenient is that if we cannot mem copy this. Normally you could load this with your file API, like we have here file open, um, here file open monkey TGA with our own fat code here in the RISC-V firmware. And we, we read this data block by block. You read the current limitation of only supporting reading who will blocks from the SD card and all the fancy stuff we have done here the last months. And so one complication of this is normally you could just mem copy this, like C API mem copy of one 512 byte block at a time to your VRAM. But because we have this super annoying 16 bit out of 32 bit system bus setup that half of the data is invalid, we cannot just mem copy this. This is why I open codedly um, copy this here with this assignment to our 32 bit pointer. So we have here our red data, so we need to read 16 bit at a time a little bit. So this is at this kind of low level system stuff is where all the low level details shine through. And if you do something on the P3 or Octane previous videos, these are the kind of quirks where you were wondering what the heck were they doing? Like, yeah, they only had this kind of bus A or they bridge this from that or there is some gap in the IO space because they didn't have something. And so, yeah, in this kind of situations, you need to know exactly what is going on the hardware level, as in we need 16 byte. Um, so this also means we cannot just write 8 bit. We need we need to write 16 bit, and we need to write them with 16 bit gaps in between. Um, so another complication. This is only so normally we could have done here VGA VRAM one 16 bit at a time. However, this this is only slightly more complicated because the TGA, the Targa file is upside down. This is why this code is only a little bit more ugly with starting with Y multiplied by our resolution inverts because we need to fill the screen from the bottom to the top. That is the only additional ugliness here. And also because this, uh, this little Indian as x86, if you're playing at home, this we also need to byte swap this, otherwise all your pixel data is swapped. So after a couple of months with this super annoying gap. So this means if we look at this data to explain you to this, of course, for our own FPGA in the memory, this, of course, the gap doesn't exist. Our, our own RAM, RAM here, this dual port memory that we created here ourselves, F Verilog FPGA logic, of course, our, uh, the FPGA doesn't see this. Our memory is continuous. We have here 16, um, 16 bit quantities of words, but this is only visible from the RISC-V system bus. And of course, ideally, this such kind of limitation shouldn't be there. So we need to work a little bit harder to, in my opinion, of course, you could just YOLO this and call it a day. And, but yeah, we could also make it perfect. So to make it perfect, it's however a little bit more complicated because um, there are two complications. The first complication is right now for the text mode here of, of outputting text data, previous videos like a good old fashioned text mode, we need 16 bit data. We need 8 bit color attribute and 8 bit text lookup of, of ABC text data. And so we need to change all our hardware description to fetch 32 bit from the VRAM, however, to use the, the correct half of this double word. So we have um, also, if you've never heard this, so eight bits are then a byte, right? And usually, and there is, there is the issue, usually sometimes, usually you call then two bytes a word, um, like 16 bits, but this can vary. Sometimes, for example, some DSPs, usually words is the natural quantity of your processor. So some DSPs might be 24-bit and then they call 24-bit a word. So this is why I don't like these terms very much. Um, 
also sometimes in memory or other designs they they write word and often they mean natural quantity of the circuitry so this could be more this is why i'm personally i don't like this very much i only use byte and word and double word so in dos and windows stuff you usually see double words then for um double word um here d word d double word for 32 bit and so for the text mode this becomes rather well complicated as in we need to implement quite some well quite some a little bit of additional logic of for each text uh, scanning out to divide it in half and access the correct half of the data for the pixel mode for the frame buffer mode it doesn't matter so much because right now we already um, have with 16 bit we have already like usually two pixels or if we have a lower bit resolution we have already uh, more than two pixels so for the graphic mode again it's less complicated just fetch more and stream out longer um, the whole thing why do i do this of course i want to program this the most convenient way and another thing is also it improves performance because uh, this is half duplex dual port so we have reading for the case we are, re we are reading from the memory controller or from the so the RAM, RAM deck of random access digital analog converter streaming out the pixel data to the display um, and the RISC-V core and we share this memory access cycles um, quite some complication previous video and not only does upgrading the memory with doubling this it also doubles or more than doubles the performance because right now here we need to wait we can only read if, if the risk 5 cpu our own soft core here on this fpga if it reads data we need to wait for the VR, for the frame buffer to be idle and not loading data because we can only with two of the, the cpu and the gpu basically only one can access the bus so we need to max it here so to multiplex this so if we have if we load 32-bit data from the frame buffer we also have a longer period of time for the RISC-V CPU to potentially load back the data um, so uh, William asked do we have room for DMA yes on the ECP5 here on the ULX 3S we have more than enough logic elements so eventually we implement we will implement DMA however the PicoSoc system bus is very simple. We basically have the only address and read write. And um, so this is why wiring up, implementing DMA probably for a much later state. First, first we probably will implement as much as possible without DMA, direct memory access, because uh, adding this will add quite some complexity, maybe even change the whole system bus design. So this is why DMA will come very last in, in this first we get features certainly because if i implement dma for a week there's not much to see it still looks the same so uh, for you to see something at home and me have some fun here first implementing all the features and then optimizing dma stuff later another complication you might wonder why do i implement um, 32 you could uh, you could ask why not leave the the gpu as it is and just change the system bus interface the problem is it's not that easy because we get um, we get 32-bit data and if we would need if we would if we would want to write 32-bit data to a 16-bit system bus we would need not one but two access cycles before so this would make the whole system bus logic rather complicated because um, we would have here or what we anyway need here now we need to double this here so changing this from 16 to 32-bit is as simple as well for the system bus interface rather simple we have here a couple of more bits also numlock wasn't on on this fancy spark keyboard so this would be uh, the next byte here of those bits uh, also 23 and 31 to 24 so far so easy then we have this right this are the right masks from our system bus this right stride bytes stuff here this are here the next and then here is the same assignment of just wiring the next bits through 
31 to 24 and then font read data so this is uh, front void data or um, needs read actually what are we doing here I need to check this um, this is needs read font read enabled I oh so this is basically I need to check maybe I was uh, maybe this is um, is uh, unnecessary stuff that we need to do now that we understand this better so 31 so to to avoid double a double cycle here so if we would implement bridging a 32-bit system bus to 16-bit memory bus we need to we would need to double or a dual cycle of writing and reading this in two cycles and certainly the stuff is already slow enough so certainly as as more optimized and faster we can make everything the better so 24 and the same goes here for the VRAM part we have here two parts we have the font memory and the, um, the, the font character data I by the way will finish this after the live stream because this will take an hour of guru meditation getting all the bit shifting right um, so I forget uh, men mentioning getting stuff right and making a typo here um, so this again is because this byte masks is by the way on the system bus from the risk 5 core because in C on the machine assembly level we could read bytes and words like imagine a C pointer um, C C or machine assembly level you could on risk 5 or any other architecture like MIPS ARM x86 for PC you could you can always read bytes like load byte and store byte and vert and, and dvert and stuff so this is why the risk 5 CPU might generate on the system bus 8 16 and 32 bit writes and this is why we have here this write stride byte stuff here so this determines from the risk 5 core uh, which of those parts of the address are valid and what what we want to write and what we want to read and this brings me to the last complication here you see quite some stuff going on under the hood here and the next thing is specifically that we need to support write mask because one issue here is now that previously another implementation detail I um, I, re I relied on only having the risk 5 core writing 16 bit quantities and for 16 bit quantities it wasn't a thing because we could always easily write text and pixel data 16 bit at a time however now that we have a 32 bit bus it becomes increasingly annoying certainly you would not always want from your C code to always write in 32 bit because often you have just one pixel so one pixel on this VGA mode would be your uint 8 pointer something um, and, and then off by some uh, pixel data of position something wherever you're on screen and data might be so with 16 bit it was like yeah you can do it with 32 bit is like yeah you can do it but it becomes increasingly annoying to always read and write or mostly to always write 32 bit at a time super annoying um, so now we finally need to take this write stride byte thing here seriously this means we also need um, to change our memory controller and we have seen on the previous video of us when we implemented our own SDRAM memory controller here that the SDRAM from Alliance and all, and so all, all the SDRAM supports a write mask and so this is one thing we need to support in our own memory controller now ourselves so that we can interface here this write directly and mask this and um, I checked this already last night um, also yeah my, my favorite typo here um, so this is of course not also we also need to change the memory inst the, the dual port memory here and um, so doubling this here 31 31 read data 31 so all this stuff here 31 and then of course the the words then you, there you see the we call this here words and here the the words and this is why I don't like this term very much now those words here mean like it often means 
words in the native quantity, which then is also by default surgically half. This is also why in general I don't like this DOS and Windows byte and word and dword stuff. I actually, in fact, I really hate this. It even looks ugly in my opinion, this capital shouting stuff. This is why in all my code I use the more Unix style uint8 and int8 stuff, which has a number and everyone knows exactly 8, 16, 32, 64, 128 bits exactly what you want to know. You don't want to deal with words, double words, quad words, um, and, and so on. Um, it's, anyway, um, so yeah, now we need to change this also to support. This is why this will take an hour or two of guru meditation. I will probably do it later tonight or something. I just wanted to give you the overview. And so yeah, just with doubling the bits as per often, you double your bandwidth. So we can reading writing from the RISC-V core without gaps there here in the memory addressing and with twice the performance, certainly pretty amazing. And um, so for this, the last thing we need some write mask and actually do I still have my, which I already apparently close this, I actually checked this. Um, that the, even the IS-40, I googled this last night, IS-40 dual port, this was block RAM write mask and no surprise, they um, support this here, memory usage guide of, uh, yeah, always do they have this also maybe cached, let's see, um, yeah, maybe whatever. And so somewhere they write here, um, write mask, of course not when you look for this. Uh, optionally, right, uh, mask right operations, individual bits of exactly what we need. I checked this also Yeah, here. So I hope this is the right thing. It looks like this. If not, then it's uh, something similar. So I checked last night because not only the ECP5, the larger FPGA, but also the ICE40 of the icebreaker apparently supports this. I hope that Yosis can um, derive this from behavioral analysis here. So if not tried this, um, because this is, we write this in behavioral Verilog as in not using some macros to instantiate the block memory, here, but relying on the FPGA tool chain in our case uses to derive this from the behavior that many people prefer nowadays of being more flexible and uh, more readable code. So this means that we need here this, um, I, I will for simplicity, because we do not, so as you see this supports this apparently on a per bit basis, um, here mask something. We will not use this, I hope this works. To keep stuff simple, we, and I hope Yosis is intelligent enough to support this, we will make this um, just for bits, just the bits, we can, we can always bridge this, meaning writing some glue code to um, bridge this from one to the other. But restrict. But I would ideally pass this here for our use case in bytes so that we have the same term here. Um, if, this, if this doesn't automatically, um, oh, wait a second. Um, if this doesn't, if Yosis cannot behavioral derive this as a write mask, we need to change this, but I will see tonight. But so in theory, so this is <coughs> changing this code based on the write mask um, here in this design. So this means um, begin and again, I will maybe leave a comment here below in the video if I find out how this works. So this basically oops, means I, and again, I, I hope um, it can do this. Um, actually, wait a second. So that, yeah, either, either we write it here with bits as in so, so for seven to eight, but again, not yet sure if Yosis will handle this automatically. If not, then, um, yeah, so th this is by, so this is write enable, and then if this, actually we could, I'm not sure if what is in, with, without the begin clause we could write enable and uh, that is right string byte bit zero. Then we anyway need to write multiple lines of 
this assignment. So I again, I hope yours but if you already know the answer, leave it in the comments below if this will work like this. Um, what you can always do is, um, if it doesn't automatically work, try some variations like having this in a dedicated block or um, yeah, having here more bits, but or ask the authors as usual um, if you maybe follow them there on Patreon and donate those uh, open source developers of Yosis and NextPNR and stuff. Um, maybe ask them if you don't find it in the documentation, but certainly don't don't ask them first. First, try a little bit around, read the freaking documentation, test it, and only if it, if you can't get it to work, then maybe ask them. I will certainly leave it in the video below. So, as per usual, just using the same bits here. So, 16 to uh, 24 and 23, 30, oops. 31, 22, uh, 24, 16, and oh, come on. Oh, I love on YouTube, a little bit of typos. So you can always format this a little bit nicer. Sometimes it helps you to spot typos easier. So something of that sort. Um, so yeah, leave me in the comments below what is the most readable. Um, yeah. So this, this would be something in theory. So what this allows us is using this write mask that is implemented in the block RAM cells, not only in this FPGAs, but also actually as DRAM. So that if the CPU core, in our case, the RISC-V generates a byte, word or double word um, to address the write. Otherwise, if we would not have this and the RISC-V core would only write, put on the system bus a valid byte write, then we would clobber like meaning overwriting the surrounding unused words with uninitialized memory and certainly we don't want to uh, have random bit garbage in this uninitialized and previous clock cycle uninitialized random data there. So to directly only write the data, valid data generated by the CPU, as this is what this is about. But this is still not also you see um, what it takes is changing all the, the width of the inputs, the, the registers, and uh, changing all the codes um, of the bus interface logic and um, yeah, adding these new features of write mask. This is, by the way, so um, fun fact, we actually, now that I think about this, now given that we have a write mask, we can actually um, assign this here. You know what? This actually makes this easier now that I just see this. So uh, another fun thing. So we can just assign the whole thing now um, without all the stuff here. Um, so this is either VRAM. What do we even have here? VRAM read data. I'm not even sure why this has a need read cycle needs read. Why do we have this? Um, what have I done there? So needs read. Where is it assigned? So need, we have here needs read if the write stride is, so if, if the, this write byte stride is, so basically we can, um, I think we can get rid of this, um, at least simple, simplified, because I think the risk five core, but I should probably check the code. We can probably not have, I hope, uh, read modify write cycle so it should either be read or write so probably we do not really need it like this so basically although we check here already okay we check here already all bits so either um, we check here already all bits set okay I think this this probably can stay like this this is basically whether we have a read or um, it's, it's probably fine it's just the name is it's basically is is a read or um, maybe we change the name to is read and making this a little bit less ambiguous um, is read um, but this is always you you write this and some weeks later it's like what they was I even thinking then yeah make let's clar clarify the name a little bit 
Um, certainly makes it probably a little bit more readable. And yeah, this is probably better. And so because now that we have not really sure what why I've written it, maybe it even saves us some logic elements for the icebreaker where we where this are rather precious. Um, because now we assign you the whole data. Um, previously this was probably mostly a no operation. Um, so if this is a write, then assign the whole data, the rest of the stuff we don't really probably didn't even have an effect of anything newsworthy whatsoever. And um, so what we do now is assign all the bits here at once and assign this write stride here. So font write stride, all the bits directly coming from the system bus, um, probably like this. Uh, by the way, we probably, so we don't even need to specify the bits, this should assign all bits like that, making it even simpler. And um, yeah, making this actually simpler, but the memory controller a little bit more complex. So yeah, let's clean this up a little bit. As usual with all of those assignments, there's always something that can go wrong. So um, as usual, it's not only um, writing all this stuff, it's also always a little bit of debugging it afterwards, which is also why we actually should have some simulation model and verification model actually another day. Um, so yeah, also this and then we also have need to have wires for this. So this is the, right, so these are inputs, these are unregistered inputs. So we also need some, for the write data here, the VRAM write data, also an register of, also yeah, we actually need, also need these registers. We need to also increase their size. Read, write, wait a second, the address, however, the address is not as many. So read, maybe also read, write, address. And what else do we have here? Why do we have here? Oh, this is address, read address, write address. And um, yeah, read data, 32 bits now. And the same also additionally, this register three, write stride bytes. And the same again for the font data because we have two parts of this. So read data, write data, write address and new the uh, four bits of write stride bytes. But this is still not all. We also need to change all the pixel data generating logic here. Right now this is hard coded for 16 bits. So we also need to change all this stuff. I probably, as I said, um, probably we will go live in a couple of more minutes after probably I go for lunch and then um, we continue with the PS3. If you're into this sort of thing, just wanted to give it you give you a run down here of why does this matter? What are the implications on designing a CPU, a system bus, VRAM controller integration? Um, yeah, the implications of performance and integration, bridging all the 8, 16, 32 bit bus of memory and width and stuff. And always, yeah all the surrounding code. And there's always one more thing is like, hey, we have this working. And as soon as we have it working and we want to do the latest and greatest Pac-Man, Tetris performance stuff like, yeah, eventually we should do the last 10% of making this really pretty as in 32-bit bus for performance and um, amazing code, e e much easier code writing here of having all the various random access patterns actually working and not just some gaps in between and you need to take some care. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. Let's take a quick final look on the comments. Um, so uh, comments are uh, VEX RISC V. Um, yeah, we certainly will upgrade the CPU at one point, but right now the CPU is not the biggest limitation for me personally. Um, I mentioned this before. I always mention this of at one point we want a more fancy uh, RISC-V core 
And um, for me, there are two things. One thing is would be amazing if we would have a pipeline, pipeline risk five core to get extra performance because right now this is not pipelined. And additionally, maybe eventually uh, user and kernel mode and maybe MMU, but certainly not on the IS40. So maybe in the future our risk five of the RX32 of our risk five based homebrew system dot little for icebreaker and dot big for ULX3S. And um, so for uh, for the big one, we probably will have eventually sourcing someone's project of pipeline and maybe even MMU based so that maybe on the, or most certainly on the RX32 big system, we eventually will have our Linux and maybe our own microkernel running another day. But yeah, thanks for the tip. Uh, have a happy and sunny weekend also. Uh, stay safe and healthy. Uh, you know the latest trend going around here. And uh, yeah, after lunch, probably you want to tune in for some P3 maintenance stuff of first testing UDEV and probably I've seen it already, previous UDEV update stuff. I think it's a little bit broken. I, I've, from a quick test, I saw it doesn't create all the device nodes or always something. So don't forget to share, like, and subscribe and tune in again for the next videos and P3 SGI, RISC-V goodness to come.